Amidst the rugged beauty of the American West stands a testament to human innovation at its best. The Hoover Dam is a triumph of engineering and design, a symbol of progress that has stood the test of time. Its aesthetically pleasing facade, curves, and arches are a masterpiece of engineering, a marvel to behold, and a monument of human brilliance. Rising from the depths of the mighty Colorado River, this concrete colossus has become a true phenomenon. Yet, it's not just its beauty that makes it so grand. Hoover Dam's engineering is truly something to understand. In this video, let's marvel at its sheer magnificence, the Hoover Dam, an American icon of immense value. If you're not familiar with this architectural wonder, don't worry. Let me introduce you to the Hoover Dam. On the border of the American states of Nevada and Arizona, in the Black Canyon of the Colorado River is the Hoover Dam, a concrete arch gravity structure. It was built during the Great Depression between 1931 and 1936. President Franklin D. Roosevelt dedicated it on September 30, 1935. The construction of Hoover Dam, gloriously etched in history, also tells a tale of tragedy. Over a hundred lives were lost during the massive effort that went into building it, which involved thousands of workers. In legislation approved by Congress during its construction, it was referred to as Hoover Dam in honor of President Herbert Hoover. The Roosevelt administration called it Boulder Dam. However, Congress restored the Hoover Dam name in 1947. The Hoover Dam is a splendor of human ingenuity and know-how, a feat that continues to inspire the world. Through floods and droughts, wars and peace, Hoover Dam stands tall and proud, a true masterpiece. Let's delve into its history and trace back the origins of the Hoover Dam. The U.S. Bureau of Reclamation developed plans for a sizable dam on the Arizona and Nevada border in the early 20th century to control the Colorado River and supply water and hydroelectric power for the expanding Southwest. Construction within the limited time frame proved extremely difficult as the team bore into carbon monoxide filled tunnels and dangled from 800 foot heights to clear canyon walls. Farmers attempted to use a network of canals to redirect the Colorado River to emerging southwestern communities at the turn of the 20th century. The U.S. Bureau of Reclamation was tasked with managing the raging river when the Colorado breached the canals in 1905 and created the inland Salton Sea. In 1922, Bureau Director Arthur Powell Davis presented a plan to Congress for a multi-purpose dam in Black Canyon on the Arizona-Nevada border. After its proposed location, the dam was dubbed the Boulder Canyon Project. It would not only control flooding and irrigation, but also generate and sell hydroelectric power to recoup its costs. Nonetheless, some lawmakers were concerned about the proposed $165 million price tag. Representatives from six of the seven states in the river's drainage area, Colorado, Wyoming, Utah, New Mexico, Arizona, and Nevada, were concerned that the water would predominantly flow to California. The Colorado River Compact was negotiated in 1922 by Secretary of Commerce Herbert Hoover to distribute the water fairly among the seven states. Still, legal disputes persisted until ongoing President Calvin Coolidge approved the Boulder Canyon Project in December 1928. At a dedication ceremony in 1930, Secretary of the Interior Ray L. Wilbur declared the building would be named Hoover Dam in recognition of the new president's contributions. However, the name didn't become official until 1947. As the Great Depression aggravated, eager workers flocked to Las Vegas and camped in the desert nearby to get a job on the project. Those hired eventually relocated to Boulder City, a town created especially for its workers six miles from the worksite. The American government began looking for a builder for the envisioned 60-story arch dam. Six companies, a collection of building firms that had pooled their resources to pay the hefty $5 million performance bond, was given the contract in March 1931. The entire construction project was plagued with challenges and hardships. Explosive blasting of the canyon walls to make four water diversion tunnels was the first challenging step of construction. Working under oppressive conditions of 140 Fahrenheit heat, carbon monoxide filled tunnels and incessant dust under strict time constraints led to a six day strike in August 1931. In November 1932, the river's course was successfully redirected thanks to a temporary coffer dam made from the excavated rock after constructing two tunnels. The next step of the process included removing the walls that would house the dam. High scalers knocked loose material using 44 pound jackhammers and metal poles while suspended from up to 800 feet above the canyon floor. 
This dangerous task resulted in fatalities from falling personnel, tools, and rocks. Meanwhile, the dried riverbed enabled the construction of the power plant, four intake towers, and the dam itself to begin. Cement was mixed on site before being hoisted across the canyon on one of five 20 ton cableways, with a new bucket reaching the crews below every 78 seconds. To offset the heat generated by cooling concrete, nearly 600 miles of pipe loops were embedded to circulate water through the port blocks, with workers spraying the concrete constantly to keep it moist. The visual renderings of architect Gordon Kaufman took shape as the dam rose, block by block from the canyon floor. Kaufman chose to emphasize the imposing mass of the structure by leaving the smooth, carved face unadorned. The power plant was given a futuristic look with horizontal aluminum fins for windows, and the interior was designed to honor Native American cultures. The final block of concrete was poured and topped off at 726 feet above the canyon floor in 1935, as the body of water that would become Lake Mead was already beginning to swell behind the dam. The community of St. Thomas, Nevada was flooded and became a ghost town as a result of the creation of Lake Mead, which bears the name of Elwood Mead, commissioner of the US Bureau of Reclamation during the planning and construction of the dam. The town was founded by Mormon pioneers in 1865, and its final resident left his house in 1938. On September 30, 20,000 people watched President Franklin D. Roosevelt commemorate the magnificent structure. Approximately 5 million barrels of cement and 45 million pounds of reinforcement steel were used to construct what was then the world's tallest dam. It was surpassed in 1968 by the 770-foot-tall Oroville Dam in Northern California, making it the second tallest dam in the country today. The Hoover Dam's construction has been attributed to the participation and endless striving of approximately 21,000 workers. Hoover Dam accomplished its goal of channeling the once wild Colorado River through the parched southwest landscape, thereby fueling the growth of major cities such as Los Angeles, Las Vegas, and Phoenix. Its 17 turbines generate enough electricity to power 1.3 million homes and can irrigate 2 million acres. From 1939 to 1949, the Hoover Dam power plant held the title of the largest hydroelectric station in the world. It currently produces about 4 billion kilowatt hours of hydroelectric power annually for homes and businesses in Nevada, Arizona, and California, with an installed capacity of 2,080 megawatts. In 1985, the dam was designated a National Historic Landmark, and in 1994, it was named one of America's seven modern civil engineering wonders. It receives approximately 7 million visitors per year, with Lake Mead, the world's largest reservoir, hosting an additional 10 million as a popular recreation area. This National Historic Landmark was the biggest dam in the world when it was finished in 1935, holding enough water in Lake Mead to irrigate 2 million acres. Lake Mead is also a popular location for boating, fishing, and swimming. In fact, it was designated as America's first national recreation area in 1964. The Hoover Dam is the country's largest reservoir, covering about 248 square miles and capable of holding nearly 28.9 million acre feet of water. Today, it is a gigantic source of renewable energy and water supply and a well-liked tourist attraction. Built during the Great Depression, the Hoover Dam served as a beacon of hope and progress during economic turmoil. The significance of the Hoover Dam cannot be overstated. First and foremost, it provides hydroelectric power to millions of people in the southwestern United States. The dam harnesses the power of the Colorado River, generating enough electricity to power more than a million homes. This has been critical to the growth and development of the region, providing a reliable energy source for homes, businesses, and industry. In addition to its role as a power generator, the Hoover Dam also serves as a crucial water management tool. The Colorado River is a vital water source for the region, and the dam helps regulate its flow, ensuring a steady supply for farmers, cities, and industry. It also helps prevent flooding downstream, protecting homes and infrastructure from damage. The Hoover Dam is also a momentous cultural landmark, representing the spirit of American engineering and innovation. Today, the Hoover Dam is a popular tourist destination, attracting millions of visitors annually who witness its size and beauty. 
Its awe-inspiring structure signifies sophistication, human agility, strength, and perseverance deep-rooted in its foundation. Hoover Dam remains a cultural icon to this day.